Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. Today's a special video because we have six ultra road running shoes. We're gonna compare them, talk about them, and then finally rank them. Now, before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, they didn't have a chance to preview this video, and this final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say, please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. If you're not familiar with Ultra, they do things in a slightly different manner compared to most other running shoe companies. The first thing that they do is they have a zero drop in all of their shoes, where the heel has the same stack height as the forefoot, so it's a very flat shoe. The next thing is they have a very wide toe box. They call this a foot shape, and they have three different foot shapes across all their brands. I realize that's confusing, but I'll put an image on the screen so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. For the six road running shoes that we're taking a look at today, they either come in the standard or the slim. And as we go through, I'll make sure to mention what foot shape belongs to what shoe. Now, none of the road running shoes we're taking a look at today belong to the original shape, which is their widest shape. And the original is primarily found in the Lone Peak series, which I believe is Ultra's most popular shoe. The other thing I do want to say is if you're not used to a zero drop, make sure you ease into it. A lot of running shoes are somewhere between the eight to 12 millimeter drop range, which means your heel is about eight to 12 millimeters higher than your forefoot. Now the big change of going from that high drop to the zero drop is it puts more strain on your Achilles and calves. Now that, that's, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It really comes down to your running mechanics. Uh, zero drop shoes are more oriented towards the midfoot to forefoot strikers, while high drop shoes are typically more oriented towards heel strikers. So if you do wanna make the transition to those low or ultra zero drop shoes, which they call balanced, make sure you wear it walking first and then just ease into it with running. You don't wanna just go for like a, you know, a six mile run um, going from high drop to low drop, it will mess with your Achilles and calf. So just ease into it and just see if it's for you and your particular running style. And the last thing I wanna say about the Ultra lineup is that they have three different kinds of foams. They have the Ego Foam, found primarily on most of their daily trainers, Ego Max, a little bit lighter, a little bit bouncier, and then you have the Ego Pro Foam, found on their race day shoes, which is their lightest and bounciest running shoe foam. Next, we're gonna rank all six shoes from the heaviest to the lightest. And here it is. The heaviest shoe is going to be the Paradigm at 10.8, then it goes Provision at 10.1, Torn at 9.9, .9, Escalante at 9.3, Riviera at 8.8, and then finally the Vanished Carbon coming in at 7.3 ounces. And next we're going to rank the shoes from the largest stack height to the smallest stack height. Boom, here it is. Largest stack height is going to be the Vanished Carbon with 33 millimeters in both the heel and the forefoot. Again, because all ultras have a balanced approach, heel is equal to the forefoot. Then we have the Paradigm at 30 millimeters, Provision and Torn tied with 28, Riviera coming in at 26, and then the Escalante at 24 millimeters at the low end of things. And now for the part we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna rank these shoes from my least favorite to my favorite. It's important to keep in mind this is based off of my personal running style, just because the shoe ranks at number six doesn't make it a bad shoe. It's just not my preferred ultra running shoe, if that makes sense. Now, as we go through each shoe, I'll you know add little notes and what I like, what I don't like, because there are some things that I think you know runners should know, but for the most part, I was quite happy with the ultra lineup. Starting off our list is the Escalante 3. This features the standard foot shape and has 24 millimeters of the Ego foam in the midsole. So what did I like about the Escalante 3? Well, the upper is incredibly comfortable with that knit-like material. It just feels very soft and pleasant. Plus, you get a decent amount of padding in the ankle and Achilles area and with the tongue. It's like the perfect amount. Not too much, not too little. Plus, for more minimal shoe, I'm happy with the rubber coverage here. It's quite substantial, no exposed foam, and the grip was quite nice. The other thing I'll say is this is probably my favorite looking ultra shoe out of all the ones we're taking a look at today and is my favorite casual wear shoe of all time across all the shoes that I have. I really appreciate the zero drop, the wide toe box. It makes for a very great walking and grocery store shoe. Even though the upper was incredibly comfortable, I did find myself wanting a little bit more structure to the upper. It's a very minimal experience, and I do wish it had some more structure to it to provide me a better lock and fit into this platform. The other thing I'll say is this is a more minimal shoe with only 24 millimeters of that Ego Foam, which provides a more firm ride compared to the rest of the lineup today. So for being a more minimal, more responsive ride, I wish it would be a little bit less in weight. I believe it comes in at 9.3, which is a little bit heavy for such a minimal shoe. Coming at number five is the Paradigm 6. This is a max stability, max cushion daily trainer that features 30 millimeters of the Ego Max foam with the standard foot shape. As far as positives go, I really enjoy that Ego Max foam. When we get 30 millimeters of it, which is quite substantial, it's a noticeable difference over the typical Ego foam. The other big thing too is it's a non-intrusive stability experience. So you have these massive guide rails on the lateral side and then a really large one here on the medial side. This essentially keeps your foot going the correct direction. So if you need 
need this ability, it's there, and if you don't, it just kind of fades away, which I found to be quite pleasant. We also get a really wide forefoot and heel section, which helps with the stability story, and I think pairs nicely with those guide rails. It provides a nice, inherent, stable experience. Plus, I was quite happy with the comfortability, if that's even a word, of the upper. They had a nice level of padding and ankle and Achilles area with this nice, kind of like quilt-like texture. It's quite nice to see brands add their more bouncy and fun foams to stability shoes, and I think the Paradigm is a great example of that. The Ego Max foam is very enjoyable, very plush, and not as boring as typical stability shoes that feature the medial posting and more firm rides. I think you get a nice, pleasant experience here, and it's great for just cruising out on those daily training runs. However, this is definitely a bulkier and heavier shoe coming in at 10.8 ounces. It's a little bit difficult to pick up the pace here just because you have so much ground contact and it is rather large. The tongue does tend to move around a lot. I found myself having to readjust it quite often. It's rather tall and just finds itself moving around a whole lot. So I wish they would just gusset the tongue and I think that would solve a lot of those issues. Not a huge thing, it's just one of those minor inconveniences and just feels a little bit off when your tongue is kind of all the way to the side. And the last thing I'll say is I think the upper head maybe it's just a smidge too much volume to it. I thought it was relatively comfortable, it worked well, it's a dual layered engineer mesh, but I did have to find myself pulling those laces rather tight to get a secure fit. Next up is the Torn 6. This is a Max Cushion Neutral Daily Trainer that has the standard foot shape and features 28 millimeters of the Ego Max foam. I really enjoyed the single layer jacquard knit upper here. Rather comfortable, fairly breathable. I think it looks stylish as well and should be more durable compared to the conventional engineered mesh we saw on previous versions. The fit of the Torn 6 was spot on for me as well. It probably had the best lockdown out of all of the Ultra shoes I tried. And a big reason for that is the heel counter it's redesigned this year. It's more narrow, kind of like a V-shaped. So if you take Take a look at we'll bring the Riviera in. You can see the Riviera is more like a U while the, the Torrent 6 is more like a V. So it's a more narrow heel counter. I really enjoyed this fit much more. It has a slightly more substantial heel counter as well. And I think, again, this probably had the best lockdown out of all the shoes I tried today. The other thing I really enjoyed is that Ego Max midsole. It's not as plush as the Paradigm 6, but I find this to be a much more versatile midsole and shoe. Had no problem taking it at a wide range of paces, and it just felt quite pleasant underfoot. However, the tongue is still not perfect. I, they did correct the issue from last year, so the top of the tongue is no longer that plastic piece, which was a big fatal flaw on the Torn 5. Um, it's now just a piece of felt, much more comfortable, didn't have an issue. They included a large foam block at the top to help with lace pressure. However, my issue with the tongue comes with the side, it's an ungusseted tongue. I wish Ultra would just gusset all their tongues. I think that would save a lot of issues. Uh, but it's a thin material, and I had some issue where it'd fold underneath, and you can get it situated. Uh, but once you get some, I guess, some more time in the shoe, it starts to bunch up a little bit. So I found myself having to correct the sides of the tongue more towards the front. Just didn't feel as comfortable as I would like. I was hoping for a more seamless, consistent feel. So that was a little bit annoying. And then the other thing, too, is it's a very thin tongue. So at the top, you have a this one large foam block, and I wish they included these blocks a little bit more throughout the tongue because you do get a little bit of lace pressure mainly because it's just this very thin piece of engineered mesh. And the last thing is while I enjoyed the heel counter update, I did find the heel counter slope to be a little bit aggressive. My ankle bone would rub here on the lateral side and cause a little bit of discomfort. I would readjust my running socks and it would go away, but typically with other shoes, I don't have that issue and I didn't have that issue on any other Ultra model. So the ankle uh, and Achilles area is just maybe a little bit too aggressive for me because my ankle bone would interact with it quite a bit. Next is the second lightest shoe that we're taking a look at today. It's the Riviera 2. This features 26 millimeters of Ego Foam in the midsole and is the slim foot shape, so the most narrow foot shape that Ultra makes. It's a tale of two stories when it comes to the upper, and I quite enjoyed this approach. The front of the shoe and the midfoot is this very thin, very open, and breathable engineer mesh. You can practically see right through it. Great for summer running. And as you move towards the back of the shoe, it becomes a more plush, more premium experience. So the comfort where you need it. The tongue, moderately padded, I think just the right amount. And then you get a very plush, very premium experience in the ankle and Achilles area with tons of padding back here. I was quite happy with the Ego midsole, even though it is the firmest of the three foams we're taking a look at today. It had a nice level of impact protection. I think worked really well for those moderate to faster paces, especially because this shoe is rather light. And because this is the slim fit, it's a rather narrow experience. And I did notice some arch support on the medial side. And I thought the overall platform here was relatively stable for a neutral shoe. However, the Riviera 2 does definitely run a half size small, so it was a very tight experience. My toes were practically at the top of the shoe, even though I was in the correct size. So you pair that with the slim fit experience and it was rather cramped. The other thing I'll say is I wish it was a gusseted tongue. I'll say that about all the Ultra shoes they just make for a slightly better experience and I don't think it would really add that much weight. And number two is a light stability shoe. I think that rhymes. We got the Provision 6. This features 28 millimeters of Ego Foam with the standard foot shape. 
Just like the Paradigm 6, the Provision 6 uses guide rails to enact its stability. You have a small one here on the lateral side, it doesn't come up that high, and then a moderate one on the medial side. The Paradigm's guide rails are much higher, which is why it's a max stability shoe, while this is a light stability shoe. The Provision 6 probably has the best durability out of all the road shoes we're taking a look at today. A lot of premium materials in the upper, I thought the heel counter was really well built, and there's just a ridiculous amount of outsole rubber that provides superb traction. While I do think it would be interesting to see the Ego Max foam in this particular setup, I think the Ego foam does a great job and helps with stability because it is a little bit less soft, so you have more stable platform and the provision get away with those smaller guide rails, which help bring down the weight and make it a little bit less clunky. Overall, I felt very connected to this platform, the lockdown of fit, very nice, almost as good as the Torin, and really allowed me to enjoy that super wide toe box. However, the tongue is a little bit too tall and bulky for my liking. I wish they would pare it down, and yes, I wish they would gusset it as well. And they also feature this strap on the medial side, similar to the Paradigm. However, unlike the Paradigm, there's no extra layer of fabric between your foot and this medial strap. And for me personally, it didn't really move the needle too much either way. I wish they would either just get rid of this uh, piece of material or add another piece of fabric on the inside so you get a more seamless, consistent feel. The Paradigm had that. The Provision, you don't get such a seamless feel because of that. That medial strap which again is just a piece of fabric on the medial side that's supposed to give you a little bit more support and then the last complaint too while the traction grip was amazing you do have these little rubber nodules and rocks do get stuck here all the time so great grip but rocks will get stuck in there and it's gonna be a little bit loud too depending on what surface you walk on just because all these little rubber pieces kind of hit against each other um, but great grip, just a little bit noisy and it is a bit of a rock magnet. And at number one is the Ultra Vanish Carbon. This has 33 millimeters of Ego Pro, which is their lightest and bounciest midsole foam. It also is the slim foot shape, so the most narrow foot shape that Ultra makes. The midsole is actually quite interesting. It features half a carbon fiber plate. It goes from the midfoot forward into three prongs plate so it can kind of move with your feet. I'll put a picture on the screen so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And then the type of carbon fiber that they use is called Carbitex. So it's a special type where it's only flexible in one direction so it moves with your foot and then becomes stiff when you need it. The rocker geometry is Ultra's most aggressive. Essentially that curvature starts more early compared to any other shoe that they have. It is still a zero drop, so the heel is still level with the forefoot, even though it looks uh, a little bit different compared to most conventional Ultra running shoes. So what did I like about the Vanish Carbon? Well, at 7.3 ounces, it's incredibly light. That Ego Pro Foam provides a very pleasant, very bouncy experience. And then you pair that with the plate and aggressive rocker, and it just keeps you off on your toes and going. It's just a fun, bouncy experience. The fit is very much like a race day shoe, rather snug. Again, this is the slim foot shape, the most narrow that Ultra has. Incredibly breathable, it's just a very thin layer of engineer mesh. You can see right through it, the holes are incredibly wide open. The shoe is meant to be light and fast. Now the tongue itself too, thought it worked well. It has kind of this plastic overlay, it gives you a little bit of lace protection. I do wish it was gusseted, but nonetheless, I think the upper was fairly comfortable and worked well. However, I do wish they'd add a little bit more structure to the heel counter. It's just a thin piece of material. It's rather flexible. There's not much to it at all. You do have to get it at least just right to have that perfect lock-in. There is a couple foam blocks in there which work, but I just think it make, can make the heel counter just a little bit more optimal. The last thing I'd probably change is the outsole durability. It's not the best. This is actually not rubber. It's rubberized EVA foam or some kind of foam compound which helps the shoe be light, but the durability is definitely lacking. I've talked to quite a few people who have this shoe and put more miles into it and they said the durability is not ideal for them especially at this price point compared to other top tier super shoes. So I would go with maybe like a thin piece of rubber or strategic rubber to allow the durability to match the rest of the shoe. So here is my final ranking. It goes Vanish Carbon, Provision 6, Riviera 2, Torin 6, Paradigm 6, and then Escalante. So what do you think? Again, take this with a grain of salt. It's based off my running style, what I like out of running shoes. I know people love Escalante because of that minimal setup and very simplistic approach. And then people love the Torn because it is a jack of all trades. So take it with a grain of salt, but this is my ranking of six ultra shoes. I think they all work well. It depends on what exactly you're looking for, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. How would you rank this? And what do you think of Ultra's brand and what they're doing with their foot shape setups?